Hi, this is Charlie Sutterfield. Hey, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a residential basement space. And I'll try to do this click by click. Um, the first thing, I want to start off in a Revit template that is for residential construction. And so to get there, I press the purple R to get that drop down. And then I want a new project, so I'm going to hover over New. That uh, brings up this flyout menu to the right and I want to select project so I want a new project and if I click the browse button in the new project dialog box here it takes me to the templates file and let's go take a look at that so I click the browse button and I'm looking at four different templates it's going to default to the residential or I'm sorry it's going to default to the plain default template and um, what I really want is this residential template instead and let me see if I can make this window a little bit bigger and show you the size of the files so this residential default is almost um, 7,000 kilobytes of information versus this plain old default template that's only 2400 kilobytes and so what's going on there is that the residential template has a whole bunch of stuff already preloaded into it so the sheets are set up the levels are set up uh, it's preloaded with some components that you would use in a residential project and things like that so that's why it's important to use the residential default if you're headed toward a residential project it just saves you a bunch of um, kind of going and getting stuff and bringing it into your project uh, from a function standpoint it all works the same so it's no big deal if you start off in the other one just realize that you have to set things up yourself and so it'll slow you down so I'm gonna click once on residential to uh, tell the computer that that's the one that I want to use and then once on the open button down here in the lower right hand corner of that window to have that load into this window and so if I put my cursor in there and then I scroll to the right using my um, arrow key on my keyboard I can see that indeed I did change that to the residential default template and so now I can just click the OK button and now I'm gonna chug along here for a minute and it's going to come up with a blank project for me and what I'm looking at here is just uh, my my startup screen uh, I'm looking at a level one or a first floor plan I know that because over here in my project browser in my project browser it's uh, bold on the first floor so I know that that's what I'm looking at um, so I'm gonna um, tile my windows here because I want you to be able to see a 3d view and a, um, a north elevation at the same time and so what I need to do to be able to do that is to open those views and then hit tile windows okay so over in the project browser I'm gonna slide down to my north elevation and to open that I'm gonna double click on it and the reason why I want this open if I slide over here to the right the reason why I want this open is so that you see these various levels that are set up and then I'm gonna open the 3d view so I slide back up in my project browser right above elevations is 3d views so just double click on the 3d view and there's nothing there because I haven't created anything yet and now I want to tile these three views that I've got open. I've got a plan view, an elevation view, and a 3D view. So I go to the view tab up here at the top and I click once on the view tab and it changes my ribbon and now toward the right hand end here I can hit tile windows and so now I can see all three of those at the same time. Let me zoom in a little bit here and so what I'm gonna do let's just adjust those a little bit okay so what I'm gonna do in my floor plan view which is uh, when I tiled my windows it came in as the large window on the right hand side uh, yours might be different than that that's okay uh, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a wall and so I'm in my first floor I'm gonna click on the home tab and the button right beneath the home tab there is wall so just click on wall 
and uh, notice that my properties box changed to basic wall generic 6 inch and what I'm really after is to build a basement so I'm going to change that wall type I click the drop down and I change that wall type to foundation 10 inch concrete so go ahead and click on that and now it changed there in my properties box and um, notice that I've got base constraints and top constraints and you can draw in any view that you want to so I'm in a first floor plan view over here on my right hand side um, but I want my my foundation wall to start at an elevation that is top of footing so let's zoom in on this a little bit over here so I oops that's not what I wanted there we go so I want my wall to start at top of footing at the bottom and to go all the way up to foundation. Okay. So I go back and I click on wall. And so I've got my uh, basic foundation wall. I'm going to go ahead and change my base constraint to. top of footing, change my, oops, change my top constraint to foundation. And now I'm going to uh, draw the 50 foot by 25 foot foundation. I need to change one more thing here, my location line, uh, finish face exterior, that's fine. So I just needed to check on that. So I click once to start my wall. And now I can't see it because I'm drawing on the first floor and my view range is set to stop before I get to the foundation level which is where my my wall is so let's go and change that so I click escape to get out of that place wall command click escape again to get back to my properties dialog and over here in the properties box I'm going to slide all the way down to where I can hit the edit view range button it's right there so click on edit view range and in this view depth, change that drop down and make that unlimited. Click apply and click OK. And now let's go back and draw that wall. So base constraint is top of footing. Top constraint is foundation. Click apply. And now I can actually see my wall. So I click once to get it started and it wants me to click a second time to end the wall so I want a 50 foot long wall so I can just drag this out until I get to 50 feet oops there we go 50 feet and now I'm gonna click a second time and now I've got that wall now I can come down here 25 feet click and just keep on going And now that I've made a wall, it gives me that blue inference line that says, hey, you're uh, in line with that other wall. Do you want to connect that? And so I click five times to make my, my walls. I'm going to click Escape to get out of that place wall command. So if I go over into my 3D view, I can see that that's what I built. And if I go into my um, north elevation, I can see my foundation is right there. and I'm going to maximize this window for just a minute. If I go into this north elevation, now I can see that, you know, these walls, those foundation walls that I just created, have a base constraint of top of footing. That line is in line with that, and a and a uh, top constraint of foundation. So what that means is they're hooked to those lines. So they're locked to those lines. So if I drag that top line down, if I drag foundation down my walls go with it. Likewise, if I drag top of footing up, my walls go with it. If I click on a line and click on the number of elevation and I click, um, we'll take it up really high, we'll go up to two feet, click enter, my walls go with it. So that's why it's important to uh, constrain the walls to the top and the bottom um, 
levels that you have in mind. You can always go back and do this later, but it, life is easier if you do it from the very beginning. So let's tile our windows again, and um, life is pretty good. Let's go ahead and place our footing underneath this wall. So I can do that in this view, uh, my, my first floor plan view. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to select wall again because a footing in Revit is a wall. So I click on wall and I need to select footing so I click on um, the drop down there again and it's the top selection there in my series of walls. So I click on 24 inch footing. I want it to start, uh, the, the bottom of it I want to be BO footing and the top constraint I want to be TO footing. Click apply and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a, um, a different tool to place this. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to make it simple. So, do the same, same thing um, to place the walls. I'm going to change this location line, though. Click that drop down in your location line and change that to core center line. And then, um, let me maximize this. And then what you want to do is just click on the purple or the pink square that you get when you're in the middle of the wall and notice that it's automatically making my footing be centered on the wall. And so now if I go back and tile my windows again, I can see that you know, there's my footing and it's constrained to the top and bottom. Let's maximize that. There's my footing constrained to the top and the bottom of footing. So life is good. So I can do that same thing. If I want to make that thinner, I can change that dimension from negative 10 foot 3 to negative uh, 10 foot 1. Notice I don't have to put in my foot and inch marks. Click enter and my footing moved with it tile my windows again. Then if I go and look at just the 3D view of the foundation, I can see that my footing is where it's supposed to be centered underneath my basement walls. So life is good. We've got one more thing to do to our basement, uh, which is to put in a floor slab. So let's go back to our north elevation tile windows. Back to our north elevation here. Let's maximize that. And notice over here, my basement elevation is negative 8 feet 6 inches. It's that guy right there. Um, so I'm going to put a basement slab in that is at that level. So I'm going to go and open a different view. So over my project browser here, I'm going to slide up to my floor plans. And I'm going to double click on basement. That opens my basement view. There are my basement walls. And in this view, it'll be really easy to just place a floor. So I'm going to go to the Home tab. And I've got a floor tool right here in the, the main ribbon. So I click on Floor. And floor is a little bit different than wall because it wants me to give it the outline of where the floor is going to be. So what I have to do in my tool in my drawing tools over here, it's defaulted to give me this tool, which is pick walls. So what that means is that I just have to click on these four walls, one, two, three, and four, and that gets me my pink lines. And those pink lines are to the insides of my walls. That means my slab's going to be poured on the inside of my basement and it's not going to go underneath my basement walls. That's that's correct. Um, if your walls came in, or if your pink lines came in on the outside edge of the walls, they might look like that. Right? All you have to do is click the flip arrow, these little blue arrows. Click that flip arrow and it should bring the pink lines to the inside. If that doesn't work for some reason, then you can just drag the pink lines to the inside. So the pick walls tool is the easiest way to do this. Now I need to change my floor type over in my properties box. It comes in as a generic 12 inch floor. Click that drop down and make that into a 4 inch concrete slab instead. That's my second option down there on the, 
the drop down menu. So click on 4 inch concrete slab and that's all we really have to do. We're going to click the finish button which is this green check mark and uh, go ahead and finish this floor. It should give us a question about some geometry here. We'll take a look at that. It says the the floor overlaps the highlighted walls which are the blue walls in the background there. Would you like to join geometry and cut the overlapping volume out of the walls? I'm gonna say no to that just to keep these as separate elements for now. Again we can always go back and change that. And so let's take another look here. I'm gonna um, create a view. Let me close my properties dialog here and that maximizes my project browser over here. And notice toward the bottom of this um, series of views that I've got going on here, um, it stops at elevations. I'm going to draw a section across this house. And so to do that, I'm going to go to the View tab, and I want you to watch what happens over in the project browser. So click on the View tab up at the top. Click on the Section tool, which is this guy right here and then click uh, once on the outside on the north side once on the outside on the south side making sure that it's a 90 degree angle and what I've just created there is a section and now notice in my project browser I've now got um, plan view or I've, I've now got views that are sections so I click the plus there and it's section number one so just double click on section number one to open it and there you go. Now I can see that um, my uh, basement slab came in where I wanted it. It poured to the inside of my basement walls and my basement walls are centered on my footings so life is good. I can't see all of my elevations here. I'm going to um, break those apart a little bit. So just click on one of the lines and what I'm after is to um, put an elbow in that line. So I'm going to click on this Add Elbow, which is that little guy right there. And then I can use these blue buttons to rearrange things. And let's do that to the basement as well. And so now I've broken that apart and you can see, let's move this. Oh, those went with it. Oh, I hate that when that happens. There we go. So um, now I've broken it apart, and so I can see my elevation numbers there. And so it matches up with my north elevation. And so now I've got a basement. And we're going to stop there and move on to something else.